Okay. Today is November 7th, 2023. It is 9.02 a.m. This is the Bluffton Council Work Session. Roll call. Jim Sayers. Luann Hook. Bray Murray. Linda, you're muted. Linda Sosa. Ann Lepinen. Aaron Nelson, serving as town manager. All right, the first item on the work session is the active transportation master plan. Did everyone get the last and final revisions from uh, the committee? I did. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. So rather than tie us up tonight talking about any potential changes, are there any changes that someone wants to talk about or request be made before we uh, consider it tonight for voting? Well, I felt like we asked to modify uh, the part of the regional part, and it looks like it's not modified. I mean, it's barely modified. It's um, some a little bit of the language <clears throat> was dropped. I would have liked to see, um, you know, five points not in there and that much smaller. So Linda, I'm going to guess that you have the version before because the one that we have dropped five points in Montezuma Creek from the uh, discussion. So I'm looking, let me just double check. I went through it yesterday. It's in the, they have it. They moved it to the regional collaboration at the end of 40, page 46. But right, they took, that's what the one I have. Yeah, but they took it out of the big, out of the plan for bluff. So that's an aspirational goal in the future. And I think that's what they, how they moved, where they moved it to and why. Okay. So if, if you look at it on page 46, what they did was they took out all those references that said we didn't talk to the communities, we didn't talk to the tribe. They took that all out of the main text and then said, looking forward to the future, and there's that paragraph. So it's truly like in the future, away from Bluff's actual plan. At least that's how I'm reading it. Yeah, no, that's, that's correct. <clears throat> or. Linda, do you want that whole section out? Um, I no, I don't want the whole section out. I just wanted it smaller. I just you know a man, mention, you know, I'm willing to go with what it is. I understand, but I'm just voicing uh, my opinion basically. And I think if you read that section along with the proposed resolution adopting the plan as it relates to bluff and that the plan is aspirational and visual in other ways. I can live with it like it is because at this point the focus really is on bluff and not how we're going to extend to communities we haven't talked to. What do the, what do the rest of you think? Uh, it it looks good to me. Uh, it, everything that we've requested has been addressed. It looks like I like the the uh, the part toward the end, looking toward the future. It gives us a, an open door uh, in the years to come to uh, to extend this and an open door, uh, more or less an invitation to the state uh, as part of their statewide network and anything that goes on with the county. And it's inclusive of our neighbors. I think that's important. So, um, but 
overall, I uh, I think it's great. Uh, and thank you to Luann for all the work that you have put in on this because I know you put in the hours. <laughs> thank you. Uh, well, thanks, Jim. And, and Molly, Molly needs to take a lot of credit too. Yeah, ab absolutely. Yeah, Molly's great. Yeah, but it it's it it seems good to me. I like the comments that you all put in and, and then Bike Utah did these revisions. And um, I think it matches up with what we need for our general plan and our, our current strategic plan. And UDOT does require it to be, uh, to do any work along the highway, they require us to have a plan. So I think it's all lined up the way it ought to be. So I have two other things on this. How hard is it to make corrections, Lou? There are two typos that I caught. Um, that's easy. Yeah, that's easy. Okay. But which page are you looking at? So on page two, and this is probably not the Roman numeral, the number two. Mm -hmm. This is probably because I was adding some remarks. The very first sentence um, has is missing either is a town or oh <laughs> okay or just take out a bluff is right. located in San Juan right. County right and then the other one was on page forty two I think it was forty two yeah forty two I got to look at the right document the I don't think we want to say the Ella Bible projects at the very top. Uh, I, it's funny that I usually spot all those typos, but oh. <laughs> okay. So right. el eligible. Um, so right. I went through and compared it to what my draft notes were that I gave Molly and it, you guys did a good job of catching all of them. But those two, I thought we might, should. Yeah. Um, all right. No, that's easy. They, they can, okay. they can. Yeah. There's a, uh, there's another typo on page 50. Uh, the looking forward to the future, it's just a misspelling. It's F-O-R. There needs to be an R there in forward. Um, page on that first, on section eight. Yeah, it's 46, actually, I guess. It's okay. page 46. Oh, uh, fair enough. Look, okay. Looking All right. forward. Thank or you. Toward and forward. <laughs> All right. Yeah. And that's it. Page 40, okay, page 46. It's the yeah. very first, it's that regional collaboration one. It's just that very first title, just missed an R, so. Okay, yeah. So otherwise, unless somebody's caught something else, it looks like that's good. I just wanted to relate the conversation I had by email with Dan Hinckley, who is now our regional engineer instead of Jared Beard. I had two questions for him that he took back to the, UDOT team, one question was on the width of the uh, right of ways, 10 to 12 feet. I know there were some concerns expressed about the width. And then I noticed when I was doing a drive around that that could take out the tree by the laundromat, you know, that those widths. And he said what they do, that is the regulation, 10 to 12 feet. However, they work around the geographic um, and uh, obstacle issues when they're putting that in. So that can, that would be done in the planning of how you negotiate the width of those. Again, it is a regional, um, I mean, it is a UDOT rule. So it makes me a little nervous that 10 to 12 feet, but it seems like that's something we'd be able to deal with in the future when we're looking at specific properties. And then the second piece was, I really am fixated on the speed limit issue. And so I asked, does this automatically drop the speed limit if we pass this plan um, or do we still have to do a speed study? And I got a rather um, generic kind of response, but the bottom line is I had really hoped this would drop the speed limit. It does not. It still has to go through UDOT and the planning and it's totally dependent on what we do in terms of actual construction. So UDOT will make those decisions as we're doing the planning and, and construction, but it is not automatic 
with passing the plan and starting construction. They still look at it. He did not say, though, that we had to do a speed study. So that made me at least feel like there's some wiggle room. But again, I think we should still be harping on the speed limit piece and making our points. Mayor. Yes, bring it. I think we should set a goal to try to get a speed limit in by spring, by, by tourist season this spring, uh, and go ahead and let's try to slow these people down coming through town. I, I had a truck follow me yesterday coming into town going 60 by, uh, just crazy, crazy, crazy driving. So anyway, I think that we should set that goal and then maybe have a little committee to work on that or something. Well, the only way that we're going to, to get the speed limit dropped at this point is to do another speed study. And you have to have X number of people crossing the road during the time that you're doing the speed study. And we can pick the time of the day. We can pick the day that we do it or the days that we do it. But we still need to have um, those crossings in those areas that we identify. So the ones that would be the most uh, obvious would be Desert Rose, Bluff Dwellings, Twin Rocks, um, and the school. So if somebody would like to take that on as a project with a goal for spring, I think that's a great idea. I just don't have the time right now to coordinate that because it is a coordination issue with UDOT. And it's a coordination issue with the businesses to assist us in making sure that we're picking times that they have people and people who might be crossing the road. So now, let me ask you a question. We did that speed study. Your your friend did a, did a bunch of data about maybe nine months ago. Was that was that um, entertained by you? Not at all. What what happened with that? With that? No, data? Brand, That that was for our consideration. Um, that was Thomas Hayden. He was doing intern with me. And it's not data that UDOT recognizes. It, it's not scientific in the sense of we didn't have a calibrated radar gun. We didn't have, I mean, it, it was accurate, but it's not, it's not usable. It's anecdotal. But I, again, if somebody would like to chair a committee, let's get it on the agenda and talk about it. We've we'll, we'll, we got some changes coming in the next month or so. We'll see if we can get something going, maybe the first of the, first of the year. Lou? Uh, yeah, just on this. I'm at an office. Maybe that'll be my, maybe that'll be my, uh, my goal, Mayor. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so just on the speed, it is the recommendation for making it pedestrian and bicycle friendly. So that's the positive part of, of the speed part when they do start. If they pick our town to do that, then they will look at these recommendations and that will all be part of it is the way they described it during this planning. Um, and then they also say that when you have those sidewalks along the road and you have the, the directional signs and you have you know, art along the way or whatever we end up doing along this trail, that in itself slows people down because they realize they're in a town. So I think we can kind of capitalize on those um, ideas of what's to come and if we don't get something done separately. I think that that's good. So does anyone have any other comments or questions? On this? Yeah. Jim? Uh, yeah, I think we ought to just focus on this active transportation plan and hope for the best. I trust, uh, I believe, really, from everything that I know, that what Luann just stated is is true. Once this thing gets in gear and we start working on crosswalk and we start working on uh, pedestrian um, uh, trail, that uh, I think that UDOT will be much more receptive to any uh, notion of reduction of speed. So uh, this is our vehicle for really doing a lot of things for the town. And one of them, I believe, is uh, speed reduction. Thank you. All right. Like that little, I don't know if you intended that pun, but a vehicle for this, that's perfect. <laughs> no, it's an unintentional pun. You know, <laughs> uh, you, know you talk about science, uh, speed, 
and, and direction of movement is a, is a science and, you know, too fast is a science. So, you know, there's a lot of science involved in, in, uh, roads and it's not all just hearsay. There's a lot of facts involved in that, uh, that science, um, uh, you know, if you want to talk science, I'll talk science with you. Well, and that's where we didn't prevail the first speed study. We didn't have the traffic in the sense of the foot traffic going across the streets. We didn't have it. So increasing the speed limit was their recommendation, not decreasing. All right. Shall we move to number two? Did every, um, well, let me back up. So we were served with the Acton's petition to disconnect. Then we were served with the verified motion to intervene by Sitla. Chris McEnany sent out a draft to me. Um, and I got it yesterday. I hope everybody has it, but I don't know that you have had time to look at it. It's a pretty standard answer. There's really no surprises in either the petition, which basically recited um, the Acton's arguments in the public hearing. It also recited um, the screaming activist argument repetitively throughout his petition. The motion to intervene is basically that from Sitla that we're hostile and that we haven't worked with the solar farm or shown any interest in it. And the answer is um, geared toward just answering those allegations in the motion to intervene and in the, uh, the, the petition. So in order to analyze it, you have to go back and forth between what is in the petition and the uh, motion to intervene and then look at what the answer is. And so it's basically admit, deny. So if you're expecting any great smoking gun in, in our answer, it's not going to be there because that's not the, the purpose of the answer. The purpose of the answer is just to admit or deny what they are claiming. So we will have an opportunity um, to go a little bit further on this, but does anybody have a question or a comment on the, the motion to intervene or on the petition? We'll need to get the answer filed this week. And stay away from any legal substantive kind of questions, just talking to you. Go ahead, Lou. Well, that's what I was wondering is if we, if, uh, like what we can ask. Um, because I'm curious, like the, basically what we have to decide is whether we allow them to join into Acton's disconnection. Correct. Yeah. Correct. And that's something that we can talk about later in terms of strategy. But in motions to intervene, there are two ways to intervene permissively, meaning you get permission from the court or the other parties to intervene or it's a matter of right. And so that's how it has to be looked at. Do they have a matter of right to intervene or is this something that's permissive and they need consent either from the other parties or they need the, the court's permission. So it's, none of these were, none of the allegations were any surprise um, other than the fact that Mr. Baird seems to be stuck on the screaming activist and, and spending more time making personal digs than he did presenting any kind of a legal case. That's my opinion. I would Referenced not. 14 times in what we were served. Right. Really? <laughs> wow. That's a lot. Well, it's interesting because in, in legal documents, those kinds of personal attacks when they're pleadings are really neither helpful nor are they legal arguments. Um, I was just looking toward the end. It's almost like Mr. Beard went off the, off the script. The concerned citizens, some of whom now are the self-described screaming activists, 
who participated in choosing the town's bloated boundaries. It's kind of like, are you writing a novel, Mr. Baird, or are you making a legal argument on behalf of your client? Um, but we can address these. Uh, the main thing is having the answer filed and then walking through what the next steps are. So people um, on the council should be prepared to be deposed, meaning testimony under oath from the other side at some point, um, being prepped by our attorney, talking about the legal strategy. But for now, it's pretty, this is all pretty routine. But as long as everybody has these documents and you have a chance to look at them, that would be really helpful. So do we give permission for CITLA to in intervene or are they just gonna do it? We're gonna let our attorney make that decision. Okay, that's what I wanted to hear, thank you. Yep. So any does anybody not have the, the three sets of documents? Okay, so if there's nothing else on that, we'll do a little more discussion later. Then we'll move to number three, the discussion regarding the town sign ordinances and planning and zoning's possible revisions. So over the, I put this on because I talked with Amanda Podmore last week and maybe the week before. So we have some, very well reasoned arguments that our signed ordinance may not be what we thought it was. We have some well reasoned arguments from planning and zoning that it is what we thought it was. So planning and zoning is back at the table working on our sign ordinance, looking at it, um, looking at other options. I haven't been sitting in on the meetings, but um, I talked with Amanda and if everyone's okay with it, what Amanda and I discussed a week or two ago is that rather than spend business owners time, our time and planning and zoning's time trying to figure out enforcement is we just suspend for a period of time, the enforcement on the sign ordinance, not the compliance with the sign ordinance going forward, but just the enforcement process to allow planning and zoning time to review it and make any recommendations for changes. And so that's what I'm gonna to propose tonight. Um, there's also a, um, a request from uh, Cadillac Ranch, I'm trying to think of the name, on a sign issue um, that's routine when, the sign, when a sign is on the town's property, UDOT and various other entities need a, a letter that shows that the business that's there is actually owning the information on that sign. And so I have a draft letter um, saying basically that for Cadillac Ranch. So what what's everybody thinking? Does that seem like a plan that you can get with is to suspend enforcement and do some discussion? Mayor, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds like a good idea. And, uh, and I agree with all of what you said. So that would just be a motion tonight to suspend it for what, six months or something like that? I don't think it needs to be even three months. Yeah, it's, because planning and zoning is working on it now. Yeah. Um, or I don't really think the time frame is as important as like putting a halt on the going back and forth on what, what did we intend, what does it mean, that kind of thing. And just let's move it forward and quit spinning our wheels on all sides. Sounds good. Thank Lou? you. Uh, yeah, um, just a, I, I agree with that. And just a comment on that sign. I went to look to see what sign it was and why UDOT would want any approval from the town. And it's attached to the coral sand sign that you see when you're driving in from the west. And it's off premise. So it's one of those that would be grandfathered in, in my looking at it. Uh, and so you dot it must be on town street right away because it's off of the main highway i don't think it's in uh u dots right away but that's that sign issue that i wasn't completely clear why you don't wanted our input unless it's in our street right away and that's the way and it, it, it's existing it's been there yeah and we've had to do 
letters that, um, way back when, when we incorporated, we had to do a couple of signed letters that just said basically, um, I don't even know where I put this. Anyway, you just verify the location that it's in your right of way, whatever. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but on the uh, suspension for right now of enforcement, does anybody disagree or do we have a consensus to be able to move forward tonight? Okay, if there is nothing else on that, does anyone have an other or are we ready to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. I'll second that, Mayor. All in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? It's 927 a.m. Thank you. I'm turning off the recorder. Bye, everybody. Thanks a lot. See you later. Bye. Bye, 15.